In this video, I will be discussing electron configurations for various elements. And I'd like you to look for patterns in the periodic table so that you can figure out the electron configuration for a particular element. Notice that the S orbitals are filled and the outer shells of the elements in columns one and two, so groups one, the alkali metals, and groups two, the alkaline earth metals. Notice that the P electrons, or the orbitals that have the P designation, would be for the elements from boron to neon in that section. And then in terms of group number, that would be groups 13 to 18. The D orbitals are filled between scandium and zinc in that section from groups 3 to 12. And then we don't really have to worry about the F orbitals, but they would start at the lanthanide series, which would be element number 57. So I'm going to show you the electron configurations for the elements from hydrogen to barium. Hydrogen, of course, has only one electron and a 1s orbital. So we know the electron configuration for hydrogen is 1s1. And the electron configuration for helium is 1s2. And as you can see, I'm highlighting the location of the element on the periodic table so you can follow along. So now that we have finished with the first period of the periodic table, we have the elements from lithium all the way to neon. So lithium's configuration is 1s2, 2s1, and beryllium is 1s2, 2s2. Now we move over to boron, and we have to add a p electron into the 2p sublevel. So boron's electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. As we continue from boron to neon, we simply add one more electron into the 2p sublevel. And remember, according to Hund's rule, the electrons will go into separate orbitals. So carbon looks like this, and nitrogen looks like this. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Now that we go to oxygen, we can start doubling up on the electrons in the orbitals. So here is oxygen, 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. And here is fluorine. And then finally, neon, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So moving on to the third period of the periodic table, the pattern continues. We start with the s orbitals. This is sodium. And I'll show you the uh, abbreviated form of the electron configuration. So neon, 3s1. And then magnesium right next to it, neon, 3s2. Now we're going to fill the 3p sublevel, so everything from aluminum to argon. So here's aluminum, ending with 3s2, 3p1. And silicon, again following Hund's rule. And then phosphorus. So neon, 3s2, 3p3. And now we can double up the electrons and the orbitals from sulfur to argon. So here's sulfur. And chlorine. And then finally, we get to the next noble gas, argon. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. So after these first 18 electrons, we're going to fill electrons into orbitals 4s, and then 3d, and then 4p. So here is the electron configuration for potassium, which can be abbreviated argon 4s1. And then we have calcium. And now beginning with scandium and continuing up to zinc, we'll put electrons into the 3D sublevel. So this is scandium. And you'll notice that I write 3D1, 4S2. It doesn't really matter which order in which you write them, but I tend to put the highest uh, energy level last. So 4S2, 3D1 would be just fine. This is titanium. And then after titanium, we have vanadium, so argon 3D3, 4S2. Now both chromium and copper are going to be exceptions to what you might expect as far as the official rule for filling in electrons. And that's okay. It's fine that you can look at chromium and copper as being interesting, but I'm not going to make a big deal about the electron configuration that represent exceptions to the Aufbau uh, filling principle. So 
Chromium it looks a little bit strange in that it is a 3D5 4S1, but that's just the way it is. And moving on to manganese, it's what you'd expect. So 3D5 4S2. And after manganese, we have iron and cobalt and nickel. And then we come to copper, which again is going to be a little bit strange, an exception to what you might expect. This is 3D10 4S1, but not a big deal. And then finally, zinc. So now that we're done with the 3D sublevel, we get to move on to the 4P sublevel, and that would be from gallium to krypton. So there's gallium, 4S2, 4P1 is how that ends, and germanium and arsenic. And then now that we have a single electron into each of those orbitals, we can go back and double up. So everything from selenium to bromine, and then finally krypton, all the boxes, all the orbitals are full. So what comes after krypton on the periodic table would be rubidium, and now we're in the fifth period. And so for convenience, I'm not going to show you every single uh, energy level on the diagram. So here's rubidium with the bottom part up through neon, you know, cut off. And focusing on rubidium, we can see it ends with 5s1. So the short form of that would be krypton 5s1. And then we have strontium, so krypton 5s2. And now we're filling in the 4d sublevel with the elements from yttrium to cadmium. So here's element number 39, yttrium. And element number 40, zirconium. And again, I will just kind of skip over some of the ones that seem a little bit strange. Don't worry too much about the electron configurations that seem like they don't quite fit with the uh, traditional uh, Aufbau rule principle. That's okay. The exceptions are there, but that's not something I'm trying to highlight or emphasize here. So niobium looks a little bit strange, but it's 4D4, 5S1. Molybdenum, 4D5, 5S1. Again, these are just to show you what they are, but to not make a big deal about why did the electrons seem to change their filling pattern. That's okay. And this is technetium, so 4D5, 5S2. Element number 44 is ruthenium. And 45 is rhodium. And 46 is palladium. That's a little bit strange. 47 is silver. And we're up to 48, which is cadmium. So we have a completely full 4D sublevel with cadmium, just like zinc, uh, above it. So now we have the last six electrons in period five, the last six elements, and that would be from indium all the way to xenon. And this is just normal, 5P1. So 4D10, 5S2, 5P1 for indium. And then 5P2. And we keep going P3, P4, P5, P6. So this is tin. And this is antimony. So a single electron is now in each of those 5p orbitals, so we can go back and double up. Tellurium, iodine, and then finally the noble gas, xenon. So only two more elements to talk about, and that would be going around the corner to element number 55 in period 6, cesium. So it's going to end with 6s1. It's got everything that xenon has, plus one more electron in the 6s orbital. And then finally, barium, which will end with 6s2. So if I want you to write the full electron configuration for barium, then you would have to write 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and then you could say 4s2, 3d10 in either order. That's fine. 4p6 would take you up to the uh, noble gas krypton. And then you've got your 5s2, 4d10, that would get you to cadmium. And then finally, 5p6 would take you to xenon. And then 6s2 is where we're going to stop with barium. So hopefully this short video gave you an idea of the electron configurations and the pattern for how the electrons are placed into the various orbitals. Thanks for watching.